Welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast with Scott McKenzie. Scott is a passionate industry professional dedicated to transferring cutting-edge, industry-focused innovations and trends while highlighting the men and women who keep the world moving. So put on your hard hat, grab your work boots, and let's go. All right, once again, welcome to Industrial Talk, the number one industrial-related podcast in the universe that celebrates industry professionals all around the world because you are bold brave. You dare greatly. You're changing lives and you're changing the world. That's why we celebrate you on this particular podcast. And if you can hear by the buzzy buzz in the background, sort of buzzy buzz. It was buzzy buzzy before. We're at Accruent Insights. Nashville, Tennessee is the location. Gaylord, this property is absolutely, they need Accruent. They have Accruent? They should, because I'm telling you right now, this is a property that's at the top of the property list, big time. All right, in the hot seat, we have two gents, Eric and Milad. Did I get Milad right now? Okay, it. there you go. They're with the crew, and we're going to be talking about this conference. We're going to be talking about all the stuff that the crew is doing. Let's get cracking. Okay, I'm going to do the best I can and be able to call out your name and so you guys don't get confused. You guys having a good conference? Absolutely. You guys haven't been around since... Like, what, four years or something? You haven't met with, uh, this is like the user community, which is, this is cool. Yeah, and this is our first of second. We'll, uh, we'll do this again next month. That's right. You're gonna, yeah, it's going to be in your backyard. It's going to be in my backyard. Or, well, yeah, your island. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for the listeners out there, we're going to start with you, Eric. Give us a little background on who you are. Yeah, so I'm uh, Accruant's uh, go-to-market solutions director, which is a fancy way of saying I'm our chief storyteller. So I'm in charge of uh, making sure our messaging actually aligns to what our customers need and listens to uh, what they want and, uh, and delivers that for them. And, and what do I'm, they want? Well, that's the funny thing. They all, they all want something different. That's but, right. But what they ultimately want is solutions to their problems, right? It, 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 absolutely. They, Absolutely. They don't, they don't want a product in the end of the day. I mean, that's what we make. But they want a solution, and our product happens to provide a solution. We're going we're gonna to pull on that, <laughs> pull on that <laughs> thread in a big way. All right, my lad, tell us. Background. Yeah. So I've been at uh, Kroon for four years. Uh-huh. currently a senior director of commercial strategy and value engineering, working very, very closely with Eric and our product team. Uh, to figure out what products people want, how do we build them, and then how do we go message those uh, products to our global customer base? So you need you need you need to collaborate. So there's a bunch of tables behind us, and there are people chirping and pointing at the screen and all of that stuff. I'm sure there's some business happening there too as well. But that whole uh, collaboration, that whole desire to know what what your end user and what what your clients need is mm-hmm. is is that where you find yourself saying, okay, I'm hearing you. I hear what you're saying. So tell, take us through that. So what we try to do at Accruent is really identifying customer pain points through their workflows. We identify, because we play, Eric sort of highlighted this earlier, so many different industries and verticals. We try to figure out pain points that are not just unique, but that are we can spread across multiple different industries. A great example of that one late last year was energy. Uh, people in Europe in particular saw these massive spikes in energy usage and not just usage but pricing on that usage. Yeah. It, it happened here too and I didn't yeah. like it either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, you started in that, that whole energy area and then you started to say this is a pain point, this is what, and, 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 and you look at this particular place, right? You think, what? It's a small state. Yes. And, and you know, when you look at it, I, it you walk out in the atrium and it's nice and cool. And I, all I could think about is, how about that for a bill? Yeah. How do you, how do how do we manage that, Eric? What do we do? Well, it's it's twofold, right? Because yes. one is the cost of managing it, <laughs> right? And the other part is the ecological impact mm. of managing it. Um, so uh, I I live in the UK, and the problem is bad here, but it's even worse there. Um, I like my local pub. My, we call it our local, right? The local pub where I go, their power bill before the Ukraine war started, for example, was 6,000 pounds a month. 
which is actually pretty small for a for a uh, for a for a pub, because pubs are huge. They have rooms. They have they have nooks and crannies. Yeah. Been there since the yeah. beginning of time. That type yeah, of thing. Exactly. And and uh, uh, contrary to popular belief, the beer is actually chilled there. So <laughs> that, there's it is. That. Oh, oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but but I think uh, but I think the local went from six thousand a month to twenty three thousand a month. Wow. <laughs> And that, that impacted, I mean, obviously, that impacted everything for them because they'd just come out of a pandemic. So yeah. now they've got to figure out how to manage all this energy cost that's new to them as well as bring people in still. And it just happened, sort of. It's like there was a light switch that flipped and said, yeah, now we're expensive. And things have calmed down a little bit. But that's one end of it. The other end is, what if you're a big multinational that has hundreds of office buildings or even hundreds of retail locations? Um, you've also got to think about how you're impacting the environment because your shareholders care about that, your customers care about that. You, you know, you go into a grocery store, you, you go into a Kroger here, for example, and they've got signs up that talk about how they're saving energy because their customers care and they're more likely to shop there because of it. I, I, I got to tell you. So how do you take, sorry, because my background's energy. I get all geeky on the energy <laughs> side because I remember it was like a light switch. See, this is what's sort of interesting. It goes up fast, but it doesn't come down fast. It's, I guarantee you, when you graph it, it's like this, and then it starts going down like this, if anything. And then I pass it on to my consumer. And that doesn't make people happy. But you can't raise prices forever. Right? And you can't raise them above what your competitors are doing. So you've got to balance that. So with that said, okay, so we're taking this whole situation and we're saying, okay, we got this high energy price and it's all there, right? So how does the accruent solution help with that? So it goes from reactive management. You can think about this with maintenance as well. You know, the shift from reactive to proactive. That really came with CMS as being able to understand when I should start scheduling my work orders. You can do the same thing with energy. The first step really is identifying the usage, not waiting to the end of the month, the end of the quarter, the end of the fiscal year if it's higher ed, to then start tracking, hey, how, what, what was happening with my energy and my consumption? But the, the closer you can get to real time usage, the closer you can get to proactive countermeasures. I'll give you an example. Yeah. Uh, one, of our, one of our customers, one of the largest big box retailers uh, in the UK, uh, ran our Observe platform uh, to track energy usage, AOEM as well. And what they figured out is they were comparing site to site daily energy usage data through our graphical tools. And they saw one, spike, one site was spiking significantly higher than the other one every night. They drilled into the why. Well, someone was leaving the floor lights on huh. every single night. And these weren't LED lights. They were halogen lights. And it was a massive, you know, footprint store. So it could have a huge, that just that little shift. And with our Observe platform, we could actually, through the BMS system, automatically turn off the lights oh, at night. Oh, you got an acronym, BMS. Uh, building management system. Got it. Right. Yeah. So with that, with that integration, we could actually automatically set a trigger to turn off the lights at a certain set point or time. Uh, and that ended up stabilizing and having a huge actual impact with the way that they standardize their energy usage across stores. And that's, that's bottom line value. Yeah. That's like immediate bottom line value. Is there still, Eric, is there still inefficiencies that exist out there? Not just from an energy perspective, just, just inefficiencies on how we manage our assets. And I always, I always look at it in a way that, hey, I'm, I'm efficient. I'm, I'm inefficient here, I deploy some strategy, now I'm efficient, and then everybody thinks, well, we're not getting the, the, the value out of that. Is there still, yeah. are, are we still achieving some efficiencies? And uh, yeah, and I think that there there's even something that we've done recently which, is, which illustrates that. So, for example, if you've got complex um, engineering products, like you've got whether it's oil and gas or yeah. you happen to maybe have, you know, complex uh, air conditioning systems in, you know, giant high-rise buildings and things like that. All of those things have schematics and wiring diagrams and pipe diagrams and all of that. Um, having those available to people when they perform maintenance is essential. But what most businesses are doing today, and I'm, and I'm not exaggerating here, they're still pulling down a paper plan. And Which is out of date, by the way. It's exactly. a It's always out of date, exactly. Um, and they're using that, and they're trying to figure out what's going on, rather than having 
that electronic diagram available with all the notes that people have made on it, knowing exactly what changes have been made um, up to the moment, so that they don't. Uh, not only can they provide maintenance faster, but they can do it more efficiently. I'll give you a great example. So we've got, um, you know, a lot of, uh, how, how do I call this, uh, without naming a name, big box e-retailers uh, that have warehouses. Yes. And these warehouses are, are, you know, 40 football fields long. Yes. So when they go when they go to fix something, they have to have all of the tools they need, and they have to have all of the parts they need at the time that there's a failure or a maintenance issue reported. Because otherwise, it can take them 45 minutes to get to the other side of the factory. Sort of like this hotel. Yeah, exactly like this hotel. <laughs> and then they forget something, or they don't have something. They have to go back for it and back again. So now you've taken a 45 minute maintenance, and you've now made it a three hour maintenance. Yeah. So efficiencies can be found everywhere but it requires the good usage of the data that you have. And that's the hard part, because people have so much data about these systems, about their assets, about things like that, but they don't know how to use it. And so they need a better way to have it presented to them. So, but Milad, the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the reality. So we talk about data, capturing data, get more data, we want more data, all of that mm -hmm. stuff, it makes complete sense. But it's, it's pretty noisy out there, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we begin to take that data, that tsunami of data, and begin to say, okay, that's noisy. This is noisy. Let's move it aside. This is where we want to focus. What do we do with that? So it first starts at which assets, you know, which are the most critical assets. Yep. So I'll talk about our observe platform, which is our condition and IoT based platform that can help manage. Uh, you're not going to put condition and IoT based monitoring on every asset you have. You're going to probably centralize it to the, the critical few. The one that we see the most is HVAC. Right, you, you talked about this, how cold it was in your room or in these massive conference rooms. Well, it's an incredible amount of energy. It's a, a very expensive asset. So that's one, one, one place where we're using an incredible amount of data to say, okay, well, how can we optimize that asset for you so you don't have to actually sit there and see the reams of data that's coming off this system. Don't. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. Don't want that. Nobody wants that. It, it's analysis paralysis. No, we it see it a lot, right? It's, it, it's, the data is only as good as the insights you can gather from it, but even better when that, when that system that's running that data can make predictive analytics for you. So we'll use things like humidity, temperature, ambient temperature to, to actively do control set points of your HVAC unit to help optimize it. We've done this for big box retailers across the globe. And because it's such a high value asset, not only can you extend the asset life cycle of that, you can start to see really, really great savings on energy usage as well. But it's all automated. You set these control points, right? You said, hey, I don't want to look at all this data. You set control points and parameters. And as soon as things start to get anomalous, right, temperature starts to deviate too much. I gave you the example of yeah. energy usage with yeah. the lighting. It triggers a rule. Right? And because our products are now like tightly packaged and integrated, that kicks off immediately to your CMMS system to say, hey, let's get a technician out there with all the wiring schematics, everything he needs. That One thing Eric didn't hit on too is the safety aspect of that. Oh, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Massive, yeah. massive. And I've been to hundreds of plants over the decades and I've seen technicians write on felt tip pens on the inside of you know transformers, wiring schematics. I mean, it's life and death. You know, we saw that. We also own Fluke, um, which is, you know, makes yep. all the test and measurement yep. equipment. Their big, their big message was always safety, right? And it's critical for us, too. If you don't have the latest and upgraded, you know, wiring schematics, you, you're potentially risking your life or your technician's life who's going to go out there and work in service on this. Some guy with 20, 30 years of experience knows what happened, what's changed with this piece of machinery, and he's left, right? We're seeing this in droves, right? So how do you oh, yeah. capture that tribal knowledge? Yeah. How do you document it? Make sure that you know you have the latest and greatest revision to keep your people safe and also more productive. So with with that, let's continue to pull on that thread. Now we know that technology, this innovation, is it's happening fast. It's it's just blistering pace, and it's great. It's exciting. It's somebody that likes shiny objects all the time, and I get distracted easily. It's it's a good thing for me, but. Are we talking about how to deploy in some of these cases with data, some of these cases with uh, being able to uh, access the, uh, the information? Is that, a, is that a use case for an AI type of uh, solution? 100% when you have enough data. And I think uh, Bill highlighted it in our earlier session. Well, I think what's unique about Accruit and Fortiv as a whole is that we have access to so many different industries, right? And all the data coming from our CMS ah. systems, from our IoT systems, 
that gives us a, a, a unique ability because these models are only as good as the data that you feed them. And it yes. takes a lot of data to really start to drive impact. Uh, that's why you also want to get specific into a specific asset, right? You're not going to go provide AI ML on every single asset on the factory floor. You want to get really, really specific into a specific niche like HVAC, which is a common problem. Go ahead. I, 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 add to that. Well, I think that I also want to add to that that the future is in how that data is used. For example, I'll give you a great example. Yeah. So we have all this data that's anonymized, mm -hmm. and so we can understand, for example, if if you're oh, trying to put something I, in a factory. I, I, stumb, I stumbled on the speed bump called anonymize. anonymize. <laughs> <laughs> it's anonymous. Okay. There, it means there's no, there's, there's no, sorry. There's I was no, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm having a good What the? What was that? There's, there's no names attached to it. Got it. Good. Thank but, you. But it is really useful to have because what if you're uh, a factory trying to make a decision on equipment? Wouldn't it be nice if you also had the data that of the reliability of that equipment so that you can make and future proof your business so you say okay i'm not going to buy from that manufacturer because we can see that manufacturer has a failure rate 20 20 times higher than this manufacturer because that all goes to cost because downtime is literally the most most expensive thing right it is the no, most, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the killer of productivity yeah, yeah. that's a great point so, so with that said this is interesting and, and, and uh, you brought up a good good point so here's ford of the parent company, the, mm -hmm. the mothership to a certain extent. and But in that, you have just access to so many different industries. So is there an effort to be, that's happening, to say, yep, we have oil and gas across multiple, you know, organizations. And so we're going to start painting this picture of being able to really understand not just the data, but also the location and all of the other nuances that come with that asset and, and be able to say, yeah, you got you got this motor XYZ and it, it performs well up north but not down south, that type of thing. Is that is that where we're seeing it sort of be going? One hundred percent. Like I actually came from Fluke as an example. Uh, so you see this cross collaboration across operating companies a lot, but it's all industry specific people. So you want to talk about a mecca for maintenance people? Oh yeah. You know, Fluke and and by by a current uh, Gordian service channel, you have some of the best and brightest yeah. minds that you'll meet here at this yeah. conference that have been in the industry for decades. Right, and have access to all that data, whether it's from actual pieces of machinery and hand equipment, or test and measurement equipment, yeah. down yeah. to the software that now helps. Ah, it's gold. Plans. It is gold. It is gold. And we're in a very unique, you know, and you know, it's amazing to work for a company that has all that expertise. Yeah, but see, I get overwhelmed, yeah. Eric. I, just, I, I mean, I just, I can't. I, it's, it's, where do I start? What do I do? Who do I trust? All of that, and yeah. I, I, I can get just, just overwhelmed. So like, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. It, that's cool. It, it, it is, but I think that's also where people like our solutions consultant teams come in, right? Yeah. Which are, which are, you know, it's the modern term for sales engineers, right? But really, what they're there to do is to help people understand what solutions will fit their problems. They're not there trying to do the hard sell, right? They're not. They're, they're trying to get you to sign a PO or anything like that. What they're trying to do is understand what your problem is, and then bringing the best of breed solutions from across Ford into that. So we've formalized that recently, for example, with Service Channel. Yep. So at the retail uh, at the retail end, um, we now have uh, are in lockstep with another operating company, Service Channel, to provide CMMS into retail. Yeah. Now that still can use all of our instrumentation on the back end and things like that, but we sell it as a solution. It's not, you don't have to buy this from this person and that from that person, because what we're trying to do is say, here's a problem that exists. We're trying to solve the problem as holistically as possible without you having to figure out yeah, how see, to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to know. I, I, want, I, I have a problem. I want it solved. I don't want to, to a certain extent, see how the sausage is made. Yep. Right? I, I, I want... I, I just want you to solve my problem and, and hear what I have to say. But, I, but I, I find that you guys are in a really very unique position to be able to have that whole global perspective in, in, in asset management, touching multiple industries. I, I, I think that's just, I think it's brilliant. I don't know. 
What do you think? Yeah, the only thing I'll, that I think I could add on to that is that the other thing about being in all of these industries is each one of them have different regulations that they have to adhere to yes. and, different, and different safety aspects, if, yep. as you've pointed out. And all of that stuff has different documentation requirements. And if we can provide solutions that go across those and say, it doesn't matter if you're in if you're in oil and gas or you're in uh, discrete manufacturing or whatever, whatever you're in, or even in education, because they have their own requirements, we can provide a solution God. that's specific to them. That's our biggest challenge is making sure that we can constantly evolve to all of these industries. But that's where Fortive comes in and allows us to do that. You guys are cool. <laughs> I like this conversation. All right. Eric, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, yeah, get a hold of me on LinkedIn. Eric Cook, uh, look up uh, London, England. That's where I'm at. Yeah, I would imagine you have to say Eric Cook, comma. I think I'm Eric Cook 01. Shut the front door. <laughs> <laughs> and Milad Nikporin, I'll probably be the only Milad that you'll find on Yeah, LinkedIn. I was just going to say, yeah. I'm pretty confident pretty that easy. you'll be able to find him yeah. with his fluffy hair. <laughs> All right, you guys were absolutely wonderful. Enjoy the rest of the conference because I got to tell you, man, this is exciting. All right. Thanks for your time. Listen, we're going to wrap it up on the other side. We're going to have all the contact information for these two gents out on Industrial Talks. Stay tuned. We will be right back. You're listening to the Industrial Talk Podcast Network. A hearty thank you to Milan and Eric. Accruent is the company. Accruent Live was the event in Nashville, Tennessee. And love the spirit of collaboration that took place at that user conference. It was spectacular. Identifying the pain points across across industry. Uh, what a what a just a rich area of of just mining for solutions. It's it's fantastic. And these two gents hit it out of the park. And the, uh, you need to put this on your calendar calendar for next year. 24. Make it happen. You will not be disappointed at all. All right, we're creating a platform that celebrates industry professions. You want to be on it? You let me know. You just go out to industrialtalk.com. We've got webcasts. We've got a, a, a podcast. We've got other videos. It's all out there to tell the story, to educate, to collaborate, to innovate. Be bold, be brave, dare greatly. Hang out with these two gents. You'll change the world. We're going to have another great conversation shortly.